Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So today's really cool. Uh, as an AD carry main, I've been waiting for this, which is great. But Senna has accidentally been leaked by a Polish website. I'll link it down below so you can go and have a look as well. I have Google translated this, so it might not be 100% accurate. But it looks like the reveal was supposed to be later today, in a couple of hours probably. So the right one might come out pretty soon. But they've accidentally released their pre-release version, I guess. And it actually goes through every single one of our skills. So I thought we'd take a very quick look at what Senna is actually going to do and before the all of our kit because we've seen a teaser already i actually want to go to our ultimate because it's global and i think that's kind of crazy so we're going to watch uh this if i is a global ray allies are in the radius are protected while enemies affected uh will take damage so in the middle this middle part if you have a look at this just very quickly if i pause it middle part you take damage outer rings you don't take damage so if you go here you're going to see the hecarim doesn't take damage the thresh does take damage that's pretty cool. It's also going to shield. It looks like the ally. So we don't actually know like the numbers or anything like this. But if you look, this is top lane, right? Teemo getting chased down. Center is bot lane. Going to fire that out. It looks like it hits pretty much instantly. Gives a shield to the Teemo. And it kills the Mordekaiser. So that is going to be Senna's ultimate, which I think is kind of crazy. Now, one thing as well, before we go into all of this, even though Lucian is here in a lot of these, it actually does not mention in this wording, at least, a specific synergy between Lucian and Senna. I don't know if there will be or not. I would imagine probably not because Zyra Khan has been such an issue for Riot to balance. So they're probably not going to be able to do it, but we'll see. So passive is going to be Absolution. Hopefully that's the correct name translation. A Relic Cannon can be immovable, but it deals additional damage. It can strengthen its range, attack damage, and critical chance by absorbing the fog of enemy champions. It attacks or ghosts to come out of dead champions. So basically this is going to be it. That is actually her Q, by the way. So the fog part of it is the first part, like the attacking part here, the fog there, and then the, the second part is the Q as well. So they're basically saying it's going to deal additional damage. That thing there, that is the important part. When she attacks the enemy here, she pulls this ghost, this fog out of the champion, and it also comes out of a minion as well. You can see here going through. Hopefully this isn't too loud for you guys, by the way. I'm hoping it's not going to be... But yeah, so she pours the fog out and that then has interactions with the rest of her kit as well. But that this is going to be kind of the mechanic. So I managed to just pull that fog back. And then after that, that is what would be able to strengthen its range, attack damage and critical chance by absorbing it. So basically higher range, higher AD, higher damage while she has the fogs from minions or from uh, enemy champions. Next up, we've got her Q piercing darkness, which is funny enough, a lot like Lucian's Q. Fires a projectile that heals all allies and deals damage to enemies. She can continue to attack to reduce the cooldown of Piercing Darkness. So we're going to have basically the heal on the Lucian. If you watch that again, heal on Lucian and then the damage onto the Thresh. You can actually target either one of these, which I think is pretty cool. It this doesn't seem like it actually seems like it is a uh, skill shot. So it's not required to actually be aimed at anybody because as you can see, she can use it on herself as well. So this is actually this makes sense, right? You're just going to fire it off. You're going to be able to. Oops, we missed that one. We missed it again. Fire it off, heal the Lucian, do damage to the Thresh. And you can see the fog as well that she could then pull out with her passive to increase everything. The Caitlyn ult's coming in, but she manages to heal herself. So it's obviously not just anybody. And then you get an auto attack into a Q. And I'm guessing that because the fog then, with the auto attack here, she gets this fog on, onto this. Hopefully you can see it probably there. And then able to then pull it uh, and then strengthen the, the Q range on it because of the fog. Or it's actually just that long. Like it is pretty long anyway. But I think this one was a little bit longer after that auto attack. Like this looks really, really long, right? So there you go. That that's the interaction uh, with that one. Next, we have something really cool. So our utility side, she's a support, so she needs some of this. Sends fog to the first target hit, dealing damage to them, and after a short while, immobilizing them and enemies surrounding them. So gonna hit the Callista here, and then around then roots the other thing. Now the interesting thing is it looks like it also works on death, and it doesn't have to just work on champions either. Hits a champion, and instead of having the wind-up time, just instantly is going to snare around. It says immobilizing, so it's not a stun. It just seems like a root, like kind of Morgana Bind and stuff. So you could cleanse it, I guess, and get rid of it that way. But the, the wind-up time isn't too long, but it's not too short. So it's not too bad either. I guess you can get away from it, even though the person hit is not going to be able to. But this is really, really cool. Able to hit a minion in the lane phase, especially bot lane. Immobilize both, and then follow up for the rest of it. So that is going to be her utility on a W. Now, E is probably going to be the most controversial part about her kit because it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, so the Curse of the Black Mist, uh, Senna turns into a cloud of fog, gaining movement speed and camouflage for herself and nearby allies, uh, allies. So allies who come out of the fog are seen by enemies as ghostly phantoms that cannot be attacked until they attack or approach. So this is her E now. And then Lucian is going to go into it. And now Lucian looks relatively similar here. But if we actually wait 
for the reverse. So this is Thresh's point of view now. And you can see that they both go invisible and then they come out as this. So this is what Lucian looks like. And then it's going to stay looking like that apparently. I don't know what the, the time actually seems like pretty long there. But then this is where Lucian breaks it afterwards. So he's at, at the side, then breaks it to attack afterwards. And if she attacks, it breaks, but then goes back into it. So for center, you can attack and use spells and stuff, but then you go back into it, which is honestly seems pretty ridiculous. The cool thing though, is you're not untargetable. The thing in the middle is you. So Thresh can still hook and still crowd control and everything like this. But if you look at it, she roots the Zyra there and then just uses the camouflage to get the uh, to get the Zyra out of that. So honestly, this thing, when you see in gameplay, looks ridiculous. Like she's able to shroud both of them, make them both like invisible there or camouflage there. And then she's going to have that bonus move speed and run them around so they can't be focused. This part is a, is going to be the controversial part. Like I'm, I'm calling it now. This will be the part that seems kind of broken or very frustrating to play against. It's basically a Kali Shroud 2.0. Um, just a different version and for all allies as well. So if she does this in the middle of a team fight, how the hell are you supposed to, fo supposed to focus her team, right? Um, I guess you can like run in and you'll be able to reveal them still because it's just camouflage. But... Even so, this is probably going to be the part that most people are going to dislike when they play against center. And then last of all, we had the ultimate already. So as I said, the middle part is going to be damaged. The outer part uh, is going to be no damage, but it's going to be able to shield. And it is, as we said, a global. So you'll be able to fire this up top lane or to any other lane. And you'll be able to actually... Uh, I mean, hurting allies is like a bit of a stretch because it is fast, sure, but it's not crazy fast so like actually hitting someone is still going to be relatively difficult the shielding aspect though because it's so wide is probably not going to be very difficult so you'll be able to shield your allies very easily damaging champions maybe not so much anyway i don't want to drag this out i could go into a bit more and drag it to 10 but i'm not going to so uh thank you guys for watching the video i really appreciate it let me know what you think about senna i honestly think she's really cool um i don't see any specific synergy between her and lucian which i'm actually really happy about because yes they work together yes they're pretty similar they're really cool but if you put them together and they have some kind of special synergy, it would make it really difficult to balance. And that's why I really want to avoid. So hopefully we're going to see a bit more uh, numbers and everything like that soon. Um, this is just a little bit of a leak. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to leave you with a robot. So I'll just catch you in the next video.